But one thing that she noticed or she heard God say is like, I have cried every tear that you've cried. Welcome to the Bubble in One Year podcast, brought to you by two Brits and their bubble. Today is day 313, covering John 11 and 12. Nice bit of South African there, mate. Yeah, it's far from my best, but I may have only done it once before throughout this uh, 212-day venture, so I thought I'd uh, bring it out again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically how Elon Musk sounds, so good, good. good stuff. He's got a weird accent, doesn't he? He's like basically English, but also very not English, so yeah. Yeah, I, oh uh, yeah, anyway, exactly. I, I love the thing that the richest man uh, on the planet is an African-American. I think yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah very cool. Uh, um, right. Kushti, so this was actually the death of Lazarus is how we're starting here in chapter 11. And it was actually another one of the lessons from that sailor conference that I mentioned that Mike Miller preached on. Uh, I'm not going to go into it in quite the same level of detail as I did with the women caught in adultery. But it was kind of cool to know that that came from the same sort of time, because there's so much in this story that we can take away again. Um, So firstly, they came to say, hey, listen, your friend Lazarus is sick. And he intentionally stayed where he was two more days, um, which is 11 verse six. Um, And that's just sort of trusting God's timing. We so want like we want our prayers answered now. But actually, if we get those prayers answered now, we may miss out on what he wants to be doing in his own time. And so we just need to trust God's timing. Yeah, 100 percent, man. Starting off with a strong point straight away. Anyone who's watching just want to apologize for my lighting changes uh, at eight o'clock, apparently. So now we've got, you know, more mood lighting. I, uh, I kind of missed it, though. I'll put mine a bit more moody. Just kidding. Yeah, love that. You make um, and I'll, uh, I'll make some moody lighting. Love that. So uh, I wrote down for John 11, verse 16. Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. And... I put that this reminds me of my dad's dark humor. He's the kind of guy who's like, oh yeah, well, let's all just go and die. But I don't know. Now it's just that one verse. I don't know if Thomas was joking or not or being sarcastic or not. So I assume when I read it, it was like clearly sarcasm or like dark humor, but I don't know. Anyway, so whether it was or not, I enjoyed that one. Um, then John 11 verse 44 The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. And just imagine seeing this and imagine being Lazarus in this moment. And a bit of an old reference, but having said that, House of Dragons is all the thing with lots of people now. It seemed like a very Jon Snow kind of moment. Just like, (gasps) you know, he just like comes back and he's like, what's going on? And it's just Jesus. So there you go. That's cool, man. I appreciate that. And you, yeah, very much, um, what's the word? Filibustered till I got my lighting. And I couldn't log in. I forgot my login for my smart light bulb. So I'll just stick with Zion. Um, (sighs) Yeah, it's true. Also with that whole point of the grave clothes and stuff like that, Again, we were mentioning the other day about the Strata Turin and how Jesus sort of broke those clothes off of him. So for this, he was able to like stand up and walk out. He didn't physically, he wasn't able to get those grave clothes off of him, that, right. that wrap. Other right. people had to do that. Because yeah. I had a note on there from that, which Jesus said to them, take the grave clothes, take off the grave clothes and let him go. And my note was only free people can free people, which is the whole like hurt people, hurt people, just the reverse thing, which yeah. is cool. Um, well, in, in, another, sorry, in another place, you said that it's normally like 75 pounds of, yeah and stuff right yeah. so i this is totally conjecture but do you remember i said about how the shroud of turin has like the fibers have been impacted in a way that they don't understand how yes i like this is completely my opinion and i have no proof of this whatsoever but i love the idea that as jesus comes back into his earthly body and he's in the linens he just like becomes pure light for a second and like comes out of them that way and that's what did the Shroud of Turin stuff as well. Yeah, that's my picture too. I love it. So anyway, yeah. Um, so before we get to that point, again, sort of going back to the, the sermon I'd heard, there's so much good in this whole section. First, it was actually one that I noticed. It says that obviously this is when he is then has arrived to see Lazarus, who is the brother of Mary and Martha. 
And it was Mary and Martha who um, Mary was at Jesus's feet and just listening. And Martha was doing all the housework and the cooking and then bitching and complaining about Mar about um, Mary. Mm. But it says um, many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them. When Martha heard Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Previously, it was Martha who was doing all the housework, getting stuff ready, while Mary was the one sitting with Jesus. So now Martha's obviously learned from last time and she just runs out to see him rather than getting those final preparations which is quite cool though yeah. it does say when mary heard that he was there she got up quickly and went to him so it's not like the roles have reversed but it's kind of cool yeah um but then we get into the point here where in eleven thirty three, he's heard jesus has heard that lazarus has died when and when jesus saw mary weeping and the jews who came along with her also weeping he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled and i had a note on here saying jesus was angry at satan for taking one of his loved ones and it's the, the whole concept of being angry at injustice is okay like anger in general is not necessarily a good thing but to be angry at injustice is good right and then 11:35, which is commonly known as the shortest verse in the bible which just simply says jesus, jesus wept, wept. right and i love it because jesus knows lazarus is going to be resurrected jesus knows that all of our pain is going to be taken away when we get to heaven but it doesn't stop us from feeling that pain and that emotion with us in the midst of it like jesus feels your pain melody's been through quite a lot of different things in the last pretty much since i've been married to her before that as well but i feel like i'm the, the majority of the issue um but one thing that she noticed or she heard god say is like i have cried every tear that you've cried kind of thing like we've lived in uganda and seen friends dying kids dying stuff like that as well right and but it's like i've cried every tear that you've cried it's not like jesus is watching us being upset and just giving us a hug like they're there it's he feels that emotion and it hurts him just the same if not more than it hurts us as well despite the fact that he knows that in the end we're going to end up in glory yeah that's good man and you know that's also kind of makes sense right because when you see someone else's pain, you can know that it's all going to be okay in the end, but still in that moment, it's still valid, right? Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so then just John 12, verse 10 and to 11, read it yourself, but all I was going to say is imagine the testimony that Lazarus could give. I love that. Um, and then I just thought that it was really beautiful in John 12, 24. Truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. It's just a beautiful analogy for why Jesus did what he did, right? Yeah, um, I, I just love that verse. Yeah, so, I had that written down as well. I did, like you said, mate, you've summed it up great. It's so good. It's great stuff. And then uh, just one other quick one. So 12 verse 35, there's the imagery of walking in darkness and that is a great analogy for life before Jesus. Like I was walking in darkness. I didn't, the, Here's the funny thing. When you're walking in darkness, it's almost like a David Amber thing. You don't even know how dark it is. You've just existed in that darkness and adapted to it. Uh, but, you know, yeah, life before Jesus is a walk in darkness quite often. That's good, man. Anything that referenced David Attenborough, that's getting it. That's That'll good. be good. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my final point is, and I was kind of shocked when I read this, 12 verse 42, yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in Jesus, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved human glory more than the glory of God. And it's right. just, we shouldn't be paying attention to the opinion of others. doesn't matter if we get kicked out on the streets. Again, Melody and I, we lived in Uganda. Some of the people that we knew were kicked out of their own houses because they were brought up as Muslim and became Christians. They were kicked out of their houses because of it when they were growing up. But it's like, it doesn't matter because God trumps all that. God is bigger than all that. So yeah, it was that basically. Love that dude. And absolutely true. Um, great. Good stuff. Coming in slightly early. We can do a proper ending. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow we have got probably 13 and 14, I imagine. And yeah. 15. Oh, I'm 15. Oh, a three, three. -er. So Silly why thing. don't you beautiful people pick up your Bible and get reading? In the meantime, you can please join us on social media at Two Books and Bible. And hey, share this with someone to help spread the word of God. Got that.